Okay, next up is our night talk, the last talk of the day uh, with Toralf Dirol. He's going to provide us with a little comparison between threats as they are presented by the media and the actual reality. Yeah, okay. Hi and uh, welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah, hi to you as well. Um, yes, uh, well, just a few words, uh, words about me. I, well, I'm with McAfee now for like 15 years, originally starting our virus research lab in Hamburg as a researcher. And after, well, quite a lot of time in front of debuggers, I thought debuggers are just lame and staring at other people's broken code just doesn't cut it. Uh, so nowadays I'm kind of representing our McAfee Labs research uh, to the outside. Yeah, what I'm going to cover today is a little bit an, uh, an uh, insight uh, into what's actually going on out there at the moment. And also it's, uh, looking a little bit about uh, well, what data is normally presented or what data is uh, available in like the public news or in marketing materials and what uh, the, the real threats uh, are nowadays. Yeah, when, we start, uh, when we're looking at the threat landscape, Currently, it's, um, there is just a massive uh, number of different pieces of malware out there. It is such massive that you have, may have seen that uh, antivirus products have stopped counting malware. Like two years ago, every product would probably display we detect 465,798 pieces of malware. Um, all those numbers are now gone from most of the products for a couple of uh, fairly obvious reasons. One of the reasons is uh, um, um, demonstrated by this number. Uh, currently, on every uh, single day uh, in our global research, we are getting around about 50,000 uh, unique pieces of, uh, uh, well, unique pieces of uh, binaries submitted for research. And from those 50,000 pieces, still 95% and more are, are now static. You we are still talking about antivirus products, but viruses are just like only 5% of the entire uh, detections that the current products actually do have. And they are maybe around about 1% of all the binaries uh, that are being submitted. So uh, they don't seem to be a very big problem at the moment. There are still new viruses being written from time to time, not that many. And then most samples that we are getting, most Trojans, most downloaders, they are nothing new. We have seen the exactly same Trojan before, and then people just packed it, repacked it, uh, just to avoid detection uh, from malware. Um, this has led to quite a drastic increase in the, it's, uh, in the number of unique samples. Um, this is from AV test from Andreas Mark, and currently uh, he is seeing around about one million unique. Uh, unique different uh, binaries uh, representing malware. And adding all this uh, uh, together, in October we have now topped the 30, million, uh, the 30 million barrier. Now this may look quite dramatic, but if we had, um, if we had get, uh, looking at the technology of it, um, um, that is being used, we are also seeing that uh, the malware uh, that is being developed is increasingly sophisticated. Um, technologies that uh, were discussed like two, three years ago are now actually in use. And um, technologies like a rootkit technology is now so common with uh, malware that we, have, that we actually have stopped analyzing or looking at it. We don't really care if a piece of malware comes with a rootkit functionality or not, as long as we are able to detect it. We simply don't have the time and resources to really look into this. So nowadays it's fair to assume that all pieces of malware that you encounter come with some kind of rootkit technology. And um, very often this rootkit technology uh, well, comes uh, not as a separate bundle, but is integrated with the Trojan itself. Yeah, the motivation be, uh, behind that um, is, uh, has uh, changed a lot. Um, previously, the motivation for people to, of breaking into websites uh, was, well, basically for fame. They would write funny things on the website and uh, have bragging rights on the schoolyard. And the same used to be true for viruses, Trojans, etc., written by kids just for the purpose of bragging rights, 
yeah, did you see built covered uh, my great viruses, uh, virus in an article uh, on the weekend. Nowadays, the motivation is just money. Um, most of the malware that we're seeing today, over 90%, is, uh, so, uh, is only written for the purpose of getting, malware, uh, of getting money. Worms like Configure, they make the big press. Everyone uh, wrote about Configure. And Configure still makes a quite nice botnet even today. Currently, there are still around about 7 million infected machines running Configure. And the people behind still don't do anything with those machines. We don't know if they lost interest or if they're just scared or if they have just no idea what to do with 7 million infected machines. Um, if you look at the Configure Working Group website from time to time, they still track the number and uh, if there would be any activity ongoing, then they would probably tell us. What we, uh, what, uh, we, uh, but the real threat is normally not a big thing like Configure, but just a small attack with a limited number of Trojans uh, that are being uh, d delivered to people. And well, the result of uh, the, uh, the financial motivation is that people constantly de uh, develop new Trojans or constantly change uh, the Trojans uh, that they have been written previously, basically just to avoid AV detection, just to remain on an infected machine longer. That's why all the toolkit uh, stuff has become uh, so very common. If a user has problems detecting the malware in this machine, then you can control the machine longer, get more money with that. And ev ev uh, everything nowadays there is motivated by money. So we have 30 million plus sa uh, malware samples. So basically, we are completely screwed. Um, well, not r not really. The total number may be looking uh, may look really really big, uh, but of those 30 million, 99.9 percent are actually samples that you will never ever encounter again. Um, people now uh, create a piece of malware just to use it once, just to send it out with uh, one single spam campaign, and uh, then never use it again, or recycle it by, uh, by repacking it, uh, making sure that current AV doesn't detect it any longer. So uh, from those 30 million, there are maybe a couple of thousands uh, that, um, that are out there that uh, make, uh, make up the actual problem. Uh, most of the remaining 29 dot something million samples do make a very good impression in, um, in uh, comparative AV, re AV reviews, uh, but they are not really relevant to the outside world. Then uh, for the bad news, uh, well, criminals love VirusTotal and similar services. Actually, they don't use VirusTotal as much because VirusTotal would give the samples uh, to the AV industry. But there are other multi-scanner systems uh, that allow an attacker to create his Trojan, work, uh, package it, and then upload it, and find out which virus scanner it, uh, does provide detection for it, um, change it, update it, and uh, finally, uh, when they are done with that, they know that with the current signatures, with the current heuristics, no virus scanner on the planet will detect that Trojan when the, uh, at the moment when they are sending that out. So that's one, well, fairly sad part of reality today. Um, for, or at least for the more important attacks, you can, uh, they, the attackers can guarantee that there is no, no antivirus protection against such a piece of software. Then also because uh, so much stuff is repackaged, repackaged and uh, uh, over, over again, uh, the real number of the threats that we are looking at is also uh, significantly lower. Currently, it's, um, um, the unique malware growth for 2009 is not like 20 million pieces, but around about uh, 2 million uh, different strains of Trojans. And in many cases, uh, those are just slight modifications, slight updates uh, to the same Trojans. So the number of Trojan families actually is much, much lower than those 30 million. 30 millions uh, that uh, normally is talked about. Well, then uh, to come to one, ki uh, one technology that has become fairly popular over the last 12 months, um, with the problem that, uh, uh, that criminals are sending out malware where there is no current antivirus uh, protection, um, so, uh, possible solutions uh, were, uh, being, uh, were being tried how 
how to update the customers faster. And the current state of the art there is uh, moving part of the detection out, in, uh, out into the cloud. Um, that's uh, the train that every AV vendor and uh, basically also many other security vendors are trying to jump on, uh, saying, yeah, we now offer some kind of in-the-cloud protection. Um, well, what, what, is, um, what uh, does this actually mean? Um, the currently used uh, cl uh, cloud uh, methods basically have a large database of, uh, of hashes, of fingerprints, of files inside a database. And this database uh, is updated automatically every time when they see a new Trojan, every time when there is a new detection for a static piece of malware. Uh, then this database is updated uh, with the hash of this file automatically. Now if a user encounters a suspicious file on his machine that is not discovered uh, with, with signatures or heuristics, etc., but it is suspicious, uh, then uh, the, the cloud service is queried with a, uni uh, with a hash of that file. And inside that cloud, uh, there, are also, uh, there are already all the new detections uh, that, um, ha that have been added uh, since the last time the uh, signature files were created and being sent out. The major benefit of this is that this is extremely fast in delivering a new, uh, a new detection to a customer and react uh, to uh, maybe a Trojan campaign where uh, something new has been sent out, which normally AV doesn't detect, uh, but that would be detected with uh, cloud services like Artemis. Now, what makes a file suspicious? There are fairly large decision trees uh, that are being walked through um, when uh, a file is not being detected by AV. Um, this is just a fairly simple uh, example of what those de decision trees could look like. Like, is the file bigger than one megabyte? No. Uh, has it been compiled recently? Um, yes. Does the extension mismatch? Yes. Then it may be a suspicious file uh, that then would be sent, uh, uh, where then the cloud service would be queried. So in this case, well, basically uh, one of the same file, Notepad, um, either just, um, well, just present as a file or Notepad uh, packed and uh, installed as an auto run would uh, yield completely different results in those decision trees. So if, it, uh, if a packed file is being run as an auto run, uh, then uh, immediately we assume this is very suspicious and we ping our cloud services with that. Now, what, what can those services actually achieve? Of course, every uh, vendor says, yeah, this is now the greatest service ever, and uh, you are now like completely protected just by our products. Unfortunately, it's not the complete uh, magic silver bullet. For one thing, it is only good against static malware, um, with uh, malware uh, with Trojans or other kind of malware that uh, are delivered uh, with a server-side uh, polymorphism. There is no protection against those. And uh, there is no protection against viruses. Viruses infect other files. You would have completely different uh, fingerprints for each infected files. So nothing uh, can be done against viruses with this kind of technology. And also you need to be online. Like if I would now plug a USB stick onto, uh, onto my machine, I'm not online, then unfortunately those services cannot help me. The only thing that those services, uh, the, the only problems that those uh, cloud security services uh, or cloud scanning services solve are the, uh, the time from uh, de delivering a detect, uh, from first having a detection and delivering the detection to a customer, and uh, then possibly also for the, dat, uh, for the size of the DAT files. Uh, some AV vendors are thinking or doing uh, some kind of outsourcing of part of their uh, detection or a part of the uh, more time-consuming and uh, space-consuming detection and removal instructions uh, somewhere into the cloud, just having a basic detection first, uh, trying to make the DAT, uh, the DAT file size much smaller. But there is uh, one big bonus uh, uh, that uh, we are getting from the cloud services. We do get quite a lot of information. Um, the information that we are getting is, well, obviously the uh, fingerprint of the file in question. And uh, we get uh, the, uh, well, the IP address from, the, uh, from your ISP, who is actually then relaying, in our case, uh, the, the, 
uh, Artemis request to us via DNS. So we can see if an, a new piece of code suddenly uh, uh, comes out of existence and is being picked up in various places all over the world, then we immediately know there is something very fishy going on and then we can start uh, hunting for that file or in some cases we can uh, even automatically blacklist that file assuming this file is evil uh, based on it hasn't existed before and suddenly it pop, uh, pops up all over the world. This comes with a uh, possibility of false alarms, uh, but then those false alarms are also very easy, uh, very easy fixed. You don't, uh, we don't need to distribute that files to all customers. Uh, we can just move a hash in the database from assumed uh, evil to, uh, to, some, uh, to the category of known uh, clean files. Uh, with this, uh, with this with, uh, visibility, we could also, um, uh, we can also check um, um, well, for one thing, we know the DAT version, so we know how many people are actually using out of DAT files. Currently, it's uh, normally it's like 80 to 90 percent of all machines have at least DATs from the same day or the day before. So people are doing a much better job in updating their DATs. And we're uh, getting also the category where the, where the file was originally coming from. And uh, then a little bit uh, to our surprise, uh, we, uh, we figured out that um, most detections uh, coming by Artemis actually were not detection where someone was browsing over the internet and uh, downloading some dodgy file. And uh, well, most of those files actually would cause a query to, uh, query to Artemis. Uh, but the highest rate of uh, files uh, that uh, well, turned up on a machine uh, were files that were copied over, uh, uh, over from remote to the actual machine. In most cases, via USB stick, and um, well, this uh, category is a little bit uh, well, obfuscated by Configure because also Configure copies itself over the network on a machine, and so uh, Configure um, is severely overrepresented um, in this uh, small breakdown. Yeah, as I said, uh, with the visibility that we are having in the background, we can see where requests are coming from. Um, in the picture down there, the initial request for a new file that we have never seen before are represented by those white dots. And this is kind of the typical, uh, the typical global break, uh, breakout representation when someone launches a major spam campaign using a Trojan or when someone uh, places a Trojan for download on lots, of, uh, on lots of web pages. And so when we see a, such, a, a, such a distribution on a file we've never seen before, then we tend to automatically blacklist it. So then so we can uh, continue to monitor where this file is actually being, uh, where, where on the world this file is actually present. Uh, but the, all those red dots also represent uh, that the cloud security in this case could, could already tell, the, uh, tell to, to the client uh, this file is very likely suspicious, um, allowing uh, users uh, to, um, uh, to block this file. And in this case, uh, this happened like two hours before we got the first real copy of that file, where we then could verify that it uh, indeed was a Trojan. Yeah, for some uh, future, uh, future protection mechanisms, as this was not the silver bullet, uh, maybe the other two are, hmm, no, not. Uh, the it's, uh, technologies that we are likely to see uh, in, the, uh, in the future are for one thing, true behavior-based detection. Uh, currently, no AV vendor does true behavior-based detection, no matter what their marketing material implies. Um, with true uh, behavior-based detections uh, uh, in the future, well, basically a file, a process would be monitored over, um, over uh, the complete time it is running, uh, monitoring for, well, for one thing, for known fingerprints of uh, malicious processes, and then also monitored uh, generally for uh, malicious uh, activity, allowing even a Trojan that is dormant for a while and only starts with some activity maybe after half an hour, or maybe only if a certain banking website is browsed to, uh, then this kind of technology uh, will be able to then also kill the process and also undo all those changes. Uh, you can expect to see that technology is um, maybe uh, around the middle, around the end of next year uh, being used by vendors. 
And another technology uh, that we will see more in the future is uh, the more use of whitelisting. Whitelisting applications means uh, not only having like a bunch of fingerprints of known bad applications, uh, but also um, having fingerprints of known white uh, known known good applications, um, which would then, for one thing, speed up scanning quite so, uh, quite a lot, and then um, also would um, well basically it's, uh, prevent changes to known system files uh, on um, and other files on your system. Well, the, uh, the driving economy force uh, that is behind all those Trojans are, well, a kind of real underground economy nowadays. Uh, we do have, like, two basically different groups. One thing is a full-blown uh, criminal, uh, criminal organized crime operations. Uh, those are groups with the guys uh, with the uh, nice chicks and the big cars at the top. And then you have several parts of the group being responsible for developing the malware, distributing the malware, administrating the malware, extracting data from the victims, and then also using the data to launder it, uh, uh, to transfer the money uh, back to, back to the uh, top of the organization so that they can buy their next fast car. And then there are a lot of small specialized groups that just focus on one thing. Many of those just focus on, uh, on creating malware, um, selling this malware, some others uh, just use malware uh, that they buy somewhere to obtain credit card information or other people's data and then sell, the, uh, sell this kind of data in various underground forums. There are forums pretty much for everything on the internet. Uh, here's just, uh, uh, just a, a, quick view, a quick view of one of those forums. Uh, where in this case, uh, where in this uh, case, they are selling complete uh, uh, dumps of the magnetic stripe, all the information that you would actually need to counterfeit the credit card. And well, there are basically just two ways how people can get at that kind of information. One way is uh, ha installing a skimmer in front of an ATM machine. That is still happening today. Um, the more common, uh, the more common way, however, is just to try to break into a clearinghouse or to break into, its, um, into a, a corporate network and try to uh, catch the data while it's transferred from the point of sales uh, to the processing somewhere else in the company. Um, this uh, th uh, this uh, breaking into a clearinghouse uh, is uh, at the moment uh, uh, also big in the news. Uh, it hasn't really been discussed publicly before and just uh, like the last couple of days, a lot of German credit uh, banks uh, uh, were um, well, they are reissuing credit cards to thousands of their customers who have been using their credit card in Spain, um, assuming that there was an incident uh, at some of the larger uh, processing sites uh, in Spain uh, that uh, may have led to the loss of uh, quite a lot of credit cards. Well, if you, if you lose your credit card that way, then something like that may be the result. You still have your credit card with you, and like um, in the next uh, receipt you are getting, then you suddenly see, hmm, strange, while I was in Hamburg and Vienna, someone with my credit card was shopping at Macy's. That ain't no good. The good, th uh, the good news for, uh, for you is you just say, that wasn't me, and uh, then you just get your money back and you get a new credit card. Um, there are also lots of other informations being sold on the underground market. Whenever one of those more specialized groups comes across information that may, uh, may yield money, but they don't know how to get the money, then they just put it online for sale. In this case, uh, you can uh, buy uh, the access uh, to, in most cases, corporate uh, uh, banking accounts uh, that are normally for 10%, around about 10% of the money that is on there. And, uh, well, this uh, then is uh, good for operations that maybe don't know how to distribu distribute Trojans or um, how to actually um, get this information, but they know uh, how, to, um, how to deal with this uh, case where they then can just siphon the money off the bank account and send it to Eastern Europe. Um, you can buy all kinds of tools, but you can also buy all kinds of services. So when you want to start uh, your own, uh, well, crime operation, um, then you can outsource uh, things like uh, services like botnet management to someone else who actually knows how to do that. Um, if you want to DDoS someone, you can just buy it, uh, rent that. Uh, 
you can't uh, um, ask uh, or you can't get other people to inject um, inject uh, iframes onto web pages that lead to your servers. Um, hacking passwords is being offered as a service, not only passwords for email services, but also now for Facebook and some, uh, some other sites. All this is available as a, um, as a service. So here, one nice example of, um, of uh, DDoS uh, that is being offered. For, f for fairly cheap money, um, in this case, someone offers any kind of DDoS traffic from 10 gigabit to 100 gigabit. And, well, you can just contact uh, those people, um, pay some money, typically it's just a couple of hundred dollars per day, and then pretty much DDoS everyone, you, uh, every uh, site you don't want to, to see online off the planet. Yeah, for the tools, there, uh, of course, is a fairly big marketplace as well. Um, if you want to start your, your crime operation and you don't know uh, how to write Trojans, uh, well, then you basically just go and buy it. You can buy uh, uh, everything from the most complex, complete, uh, well, toolkits uh, with, central, with, with centralized management and everything, or you can just buy uh, some specialty tools like maybe a custom packer or uh, something like that. So uh, the, and then in this case, Shark is one of those tools uh, where you can then just configure your own Trojan uh, with a nice GUI, go through all the options, um, configure it uh, the way you want, um, what kind of information should be, uh, should be taken from a, a machine, where should, where should it be sent to. And uh, then once you've done that, then you just need to distribute your Trojan and uh, there is also a, a central management uh, that comes with this kind of console. Um, for banking Trojans, uh, you can very easily uh, uh, kind of add information to your Trojan for a specific bank, uh, what it should do. Uh, like in this case, uh, config file for Limbo. Um, whenever the user is browsing to, uh, to citibank.com, uh, then, in addition to the normal fields on a web page, it would ask, uh, it would present you the text to prevent uh, fraud, enter your credit card information, please, your ATM or check card number, expiration date, ATM PIN. And this is just part of the normal website. So this normally looks fairly legit to people, and many people fall, uh, actually fall for it. Here's another example with uh, Topic, uh, how it really looks like uh, when you have Topic on your machine and you go to a website. Like with most banking Trojans, unless you're surfing to a, web, uh, to a website, they are uh, doing absolutely nothing. They are just waiting for you to, uh, to go someplace. And uh, then you see, well, the SSL connection is, uh, is on and the, uh, all the certificates are valid. Uh, the Trojan uh, just places additional information inside uh, your browser. So it's in this case, a couple of, well, couple of screens uh, or a couple of fields uh, asking for first name, last name, mother's maiden's name, card number, pin, and a couple of other things. So they, the attacker in this case may have overdone it a little bit. And uh, well, for the delivery of uh, Trojans to machines, uh, you, you probably still, um, uh, probably most of you have seen one of those emails uh, in one or the other forms where an email comes just with a small attachment, which is like the real classic uh, way of distributing Trojans. And it is still the most common way today. And most, pe uh, most people just talk about drive-by downloads, but actually most uh, Trojans are distributed by either direct email attachment or by providing URLs in emails. Then, uh, well, those uh, attacks, they range from like really dumb and really stupid uh, to s a very specific to a small number of target to uh, really specific to just one single target. Uh, in this case, an email that was being sent to one of our chief execs, um, um, where, the, um, where the exec is then targeted to uh, download additional information about some kind of uh, text statements. Um, there was a wave of this sent around in the U.S. a while back, targeting a couple of thousand bigger companies. And uh, so the, tax, uh, co the United States tax could actually put a warning on, on their top website uh, that they didn't send out this, in, uh, this email and that they will never send out such a thing in the, um, now or in the future. 
And uh, well, those kind of uh, really targeted uh, spear phishing is uh, uh, still being used to attack uh, governments, to attack um, other corporations. And normally this does not make the press. It only makes the press uh, in uh, when, uh, for example, it's, uh, uh, I don't remember the name of the Trojan, uh, when, a, uh, when a botnet was uncovered, uh, where the botnet was only 1,500 machines, but all those uh, 1,500 machines were in offices uh, and in embassies of various governments around the world, um, where the attacker tried uh, to, uh, um, where the attack was tied to uh, the Dalai Lama, where they tried to find out more information about what the various governments are uh, maybe trying to plan uh, uh, with regard uh, to, uh, to Tibet. And while the attack, well, let's say it originated from IP addresses within the Chinese web space, which doesn't necessarily mean it's coming from there, uh, but it could. Then people also, say, then people also use like, yeah, all kind of current developments, especially trage uh, tragedies, uh, to uh, to deliver the malware. So whenever something uh, big is happening, like um, Michael Jackson dies or uh, uh, Patrick Swayze dies, then people jump on it and start sending out spam messages. For one thing, trying to sell some products, and then also quite a lot of spam that uh, just uh, take this tra takes this, this strategy to lure people onto a website to maybe look at a video that uh, requires you to download an additional codec, which is the actual, um, which uh, then is the actual Trojan. All this is being used, and uh, uh, the Black Hats are using search engine optimization um, to uh, also make sure that uh, when you Google for those kinds of tragedies, um, that you will actually end up on bad, pa uh, on, well, on bad pages. Uh, two days ago, there was a discussion of a fairly big uh, incident where a couple of hundred thousand machines uh, were being uh, compromised to place like some kind of fake blog on it, and this, those fake blogs were just uh, written so that they were very attractive uh, for a search engine to list. And uh, also, the, uh, when you when you browse to that site, they would actually check for the Google referrer. You would only be presented with the malware if you would uh, if you were coming via a Google uh, uh, via a Google search result. Yeah. Then and. Uh, um, well, links are fairly popular, links not only in emails, but uh, also links uh, within social networks. Uh, people have been attacked with those for years, and uh, just, well, fairly recently with Coopface, uh, this actually got some attention, uh, that it is now fairly common, to, uh, fairly common way to attack a person by sending him an e uh, a link in uh, inside uh, those Facebook, Xing, LinkedIn, whatever sites. And Coopface automated this, so this uh, well got, uh, was fairly known fairly fast. The way Coopface the way Coopface works is uh, when you have uh, when you have got an infected machine, um, it would send out uh, such kind of message to all your Facebook friends, generic message like you just look awesome in this new movie or wow wow you were pretty drunk yesterday, something like that where people think what a movie with me inside, it may be embarrassing, I better click on it. And uh, when, when you then click on the link, then you're actually taking outside to some other site uh, where you in most cases are presented with something like this, secret video by Tom, and uh, then getting a message, yeah, unfortunately your version of Flash Player is out of date, please download this update. And well, one giveaway is in most cases, the, uh, all this is one picture, so wherever you click on it, uh, you will see those small additional icons uh, appearing, indicating it's a picture, not a movie. And well, when you click anywhere on this, uh, on this picture, then uh, you're being offered a codec or something that at least looks like a codec um, that will then, when you open it, uh, infect your machine. Uh, Coopface has become fairly popular this year with quite a number of d uh, different variants uh, uh, that uh, uh, were racing throughout the Facebook network. Facebook is doing quite a good, of, uh, quite a good job in uh, detecting and blocking those really fast. 
um, but they still take a couple of minutes to first discover a, uh, an attack and then disable the links. So when, this, uh, when, you get to, uh, when you get one of those links and you're really fast, then you will still be able to get to the original page. Then another fairly common way nowadays to, uh, uh, to infect other people machines or to deliver malware onto a machine is the autorun feature. The autorun feature has been completely ignored until Configure came. And actually Configure was uh, just a very small tip of the iceberg. Here in this uh, stat, uh, the, the, blue, uh, the blue bars are all, these, um, all the queries uh, or all the detections of Configure with regard to autorun. And uh, the, it's, um, the yellowish bars are the total number of, um, out, of, yeah, of attacks via autorun uh, that we have been seeing. Um, autorun on USB sticks is something that is a little bit uh, tricky to disable. Fortunately, it is, now is, is, it is very easy to disable it uh, with Windows 7. And uh, many people just never changed, uh, uh, changed their settings. So the, uh, most, yeah, ma many people are vulnerable uh, to uh, this as an infection vector. Uh, it became popular with Configure because this was the way how Configure got into a network in the first place. And then Configure tries to spread, so it's fairly obvious uh, then inside your network. Most Trojans, they, do, they don't try to uh, browse through your network. They just, uh, well, run, do that Trojan thing, and then also try to copy themselves as auto-run on everything um, that you're using on that machine. And, well, this was just a screenshot uh, a couple of weeks ago in a bar in Prague where it's, uh, a woman came by and asked me, could you please copy like some files from a camera onto a USB stick? And okay, in this case, it was a known Trojan. Um, if I would have, wouldn't have uh, auto run disabled anyway, uh, then just by being nice to a person, copying files from a camera to a USB stick would then already have infected my machine. And the lady was definitely not happy when I had to tell her that she has a major issue with her machine at home and uh, should consider reinstalling it. And well, the, uh, the most discussed way of distributing malware today is uh, certainly by using a web attack. Uh, a web attack is where well, the normal uh, the user is just browsing to some kind of website um, where either the website um, uh, has some vulnerabilities and people broke into it, or the more common, uh, the more common way nowadays is browsing to a website that has been pushed uh, in Google results uh, with the help of search engine optimization. And well, then you get an iframe pointing you to another, uh, to a drive-by attack server. Uh, this will t uh, try a number of vulnerabilities depending on uh, your browser, your operating system, etc. And uh, in the case of Topic, uh, it would then actually first uh, download the first part of the entire attack, which is the Maproot uh, rootkit. Maproot uh, is, uh, was the first rootkit that actually is, um, infects the master boot record and uh, then keeps control from there on. And your machine will report to the Maproot uh, command control server on a regular basis. And the first command from there will then be, here are the uh, topic files, please download and install, uh, which the map root binaries will happily do. And uh, then to, uh, the real Trojan topic is then um, installed, injects itself in your browser and a couple of other applications. And then automatically, it's, um, every 20 minutes, um, all the data that uh, the Trojan has stolen is, out, uh, is uploaded to the topic command and control server. And uh, the machine is also getting updates over specific websites uh, where Topic should insert additional information um, when uh, the user is browsing to it. In, in most cases, those are like the web shops um, and um, all the online banks. Yeah, uh, hacking websites uh, for, uh, simply for the purpose of uh, getting people uh, well, redirected onto your attack server. Uh, was a fairly common way one year ago. It is still a fairly common way today. I just tried like the same uh, search, which just searches for a script in the title today. And um, well, one year ago, uh, the search yielded 200,000 machines. Now it's still 100,000 machines. Um, but those machines are normally like not really within the heavily, uh, heavily traveled to place of the internet. 
um, most of the, at least the bigger web servers uh, um, have, um, have now been patched against being vulnerable to all those automated um, SQL injection attack that has been used to carry out uh, this kind of attacks. So more common today is uh, that uh, people actually are doing some search for something on Google and then the attackers um, have been using search engine optimization techniques instead of uh, just uh, breaking into websites. Well, but in this case, when they break into a website, they just place um, uh, either an iframe or a call to a script, which then uh, um, um, uh, decrypts itself uh, as an iframe onto the website, and then you're taken to some kind of um, to some kind uh, of attack server. So yeah, as, as I already have been mentioning, search engine optimization uh, is really taking over from websites that just have been compromised. And it's like kind of kind of hard uh, for us to do something about that. It's probably this, uh, more uh, where uh, search engines uh, can uh, try to figure out that uh, well malicious search engine optimization techniques have been used uh, to uh, prevent uh, this kind of things from happening. Yeah. Then on the attack uh, on the attack uh, kits. It can fairly, happen, uh, fairly often happen that uh, people, when they are being redirected to such an attack server, are presented uh, with an O-Day. Uh, those people who are uh, commercially developing those attack kits uh, are buying O-Days uh, if they can, implementing them uh, into their attack server, and then selling, that, uh, selling it as, an, as a service uh, to their customers. Here's, uh, well, a couple of screenshots from an advertisement for one of those attack servers. Sploit25 is certainly not, not like the most widely used or even the best uh, attack, uh, attack toolkit, but it's still the only one where I've seen the advertisement in English instead of Russian. And, um, well, this being then advertised in forums uh, where, uh, where, peop uh, where it is offered for the, equiv the equivalent of 2,500 US dollars, and it comes complete with tech support. Um, you can uh, buy updates for it. And well, in case you'd like try to pirate it, then you, you will lose all support, updates, and guarantees, etc. And well, to start your career as a cyber criminal, you, then you just need a, a web server with a database, just run the install file, everything will run through and then uh, you just to get, uh, get uh, at the end see the message uh, replace file.exe with your file maybe a trojan that you've generated with one of the other trojan packs and start redirecting traffic to it logging in getting an overview over how many people um, have been visiting your sites and uh, how much uh, how big the percentage of those were that were actually in, uh, infected and uh, well, for most attack kits, we see like um, effectiveness of something between 20 and 30 percent of all the machines that uh, are hitting on that uh, attack server that actually are getting compromised. And well, then uh, once, uh, one other thing that we have seen, uh, well, becoming a bigger problem uh, lately are the, like those, you, uh, those fake antivirus uh, uh, products. Many of you probably have seen one of those adverts that is like saying, yeah, your computer contains vulnerabilities or your computer is insecure. Um, if you click on those ads, uh, then uh, something uh, wants to run that uh, is like scanning your computer. Um, for malware and then typically it's finding something telling you the, your computer is in real danger Trojans found everything um, Anything nasty is found and then they offer to remove it or to continue unprotected and uh, removal uh, Removing those threats then actually means that you first have to go and buy this product and this product is like completely bogus um, so, uh, what, you would, what you get when you buy it is just something that disables the message uh, to detect those uh, uh, evil Trojans that have been picked up before. And th this has actually become a fairly big business. Um, a fairly big business uh, where, where, uh, where a colleague of mine was originally tracking those, trying to track those websites just for the purpose of uh, automatically, it's, um, automatically downloading all new versions of it and uh, adding detection for it. 
And we figured out, or we uh, became aware that just because they are cyber criminals, that doesn't necessarily mean they have any clue about security. So one of those companies uh, that is doing a fairly big business there is Innovative Marketing in the Ukraine. Um, here are the actual pic uh, people who are, uh, who are running this business as a cyber crime. And well, we, uh, while, we, while we were tracking the distribution sites, uh, we came across um, portals, SharePoint servers that were completely connected, to, uh, open to the internet without any additional information. Um, their asterisk uh, phone system was available on the internet. And with a little bit uh, more digging, we came across pretty much everything, employee lists, source codes, affiliate lists. Um, and well, this kind of information then, uh, well, we did present it at our focus conference uh, last, year, uh, last month. And a copy of those uh, 63 gigabyte of uh, total documentation that we got together. Uh, was also presented uh, to a couple of uh, a couple of agencies. Uh, so if, any th uh, if anyone here is, uh, from Austrian police would be interested, then just come and see me afterwards. Um, basically, the uh, combined findings of uh, what we had within uh, this 63 gigabytes of information, um, we found out that um, over a 10-day time period, a total number of 4 million people tried to download the products. That is, a th uh, 4 million people uh, clicked, uh, clicked, on the, it's, um, yeah, clicked on the ads and then uh, were downloading the initial file that is then saying your computer is like really endangered, etc. cetera. Um, uh, there were around about 2 million inbound and outbound uh, calls uh, from their tech support department. And they did actually store all those calls as WAF files, which is like kind of funny to listen to such a uh, tech support uh, conversation, um, where then uh, someone uh, calls in, yeah, I've got this, uh, I've got this uh, product of you that is saying, uh, but my normal scanner wouldn't let me run it. It's, it is saying something like uh, fake alert scareware. Uh, yeah, you know, you, don't, you cannot have two antivirus products running. Which antivirus products do you have? Uh, okay, yeah, I help you uh, with the deinstallation of the real um, antivirus products, and then the installation of these products will run through. And most people were actually fairly happy at the end of the call, and some were even saying, yeah, thanks, my machine is also slightly faster now, well, with no protection. And um, over, um, I think it was 11 months, uh, we have also seen the order ID going up uh, four and a half million times. And they only increase the order ID every time they successfully sell a product. Uh, with an average price of 40 US dollars, uh, that totals to 180 million US dollars uh, just, uh, well, uh, just in 11 months for, uh, for this operation. Innovative Marketing Ukraine doesn't exist any longer, but there are a couple of other companies that have taken over, sometimes uh, even with the same people, and they still uh, prefer to not secure their systems, so we are happily tracking them. Yeah, and then, well, the, uh, the latest development um, in my verse is just depicted in, uh, well, in two examples here. Uh, normally, when you think about malware, you just think about like password stealing, keyboard logging, etc. Um, um, this has become less lucrative for the criminals over time, in particular trying to get credit card information. Uh, credit card used to be worth a couple of dollars uh, two or three years ago. It is now worth 10 cents. Uh, so people are now trying different means uh, to get at uh, lucrative data. Um, one that uh, was mentioned in the media a while back uh, is a Trojan called URL Zone. Uh, that Trojan, uh, well, Kind of, uh, runs in the background, is pre-configured uh, when, a, when a user is going to a certain uh, banking site to automatically, uh, whenever the user does a, a transaction, to do a completely different transaction to another place and uh, also hide those real transactions in your transaction statement. So while that Trojan is running, the user in his statement will see the transaction that he thinks he did um, but really, in the background, the Trojan did some completely uh, different transaction. 
And I'm not sure if any one of you have seen the uh, Zoys uh, human uh, man in the middle interface yet. Uh, here's uh, what, it, uh, what it looks like uh, when, uh, well, when a victim has uh, this running on his machine. Um, it, uh, it contains information about a number of banks, not, uh, not just PostBank, but also some others. And when a user then is browsing to his bank, he will first see, oh, we're doing like some kind of maintenance. Uh, please, wait, uh, please wait for a while. Uh, this bar is then actually moving. And when this bar is over, then the user has to answer some mathematic uh, questions for security reasons. Um, the user may be thinking, oh, cool, additional security to make it impossible for someone to get at my information. Um, after successfully or not, I think it doesn't matter uh, if, you answer, uh, if you provide the correct answer. Um, again, for security reasons, uh, you are being asked for your phone number. And you need to verify your, that it is your phone number by, in this case, entering I10 number 10 into, its, um, into the form. Then you get an acknowledgement uh, that, yes, your phone has been added successfully to your account number. And then when you finally try to do some online banking, unfortunately, they are closed for maintenance. And, well, there is obviously some, something happening in the background. Um, someone is sitting there staring at uh, this very console. And he, uh, uh, when a customer logs into the, his banking site, um, they immediately get the login and the password. And they then use this and, uh, well, basically all the mathematic questions and the uh, maintenance uh, thing before was just for the attacker to get time, to get time to also log into that account, um, get time to initiate a transaction, and then you, uh, you need to like uh, verify, yes, I want to, uh, it is me, I want to send this uh, transaction with an item. So your bank is asking you for an item, and, and then it's where you, uh, well, uh, the operator is asking the victim for the item, uh, whatever uh, the bank originally asked from him. So this is a very successful uh, attack against, uh, well, currently being used, uh, um, uh, currently being used security measure, uh, measures by, uh, by banks. Okay, then I've come to the end of uh, this presentation. For more information, um, well, one thing that I would really recommend is our Avid Labs blog, which is like guaranteed no marketing. And well, then I thank you for your time.